Module 3.3, The Power Rule. Objective 1, use the power rule to find the derivative. Objective 2, use the power rule and our understanding of derivatives to solve real world problems. Objective 1, use the power rule to find the derivative. Now that we have in, introduced the derivative, work through some of the notation and use derivatives in a few of the mathematical applications, it is important for us to begin to study the derivative in real world applications. Before we do this, however, we need to learn the shortcut. We're not bagged down with all the algebra. The shortcut we will discuss is called the power rule. In many cases, the power rule will allow us to make quick work of finding the derivative of a function. If we are given a function in the format of f of x is equal to a x to the n, then the derivative f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches zero of the function of x plus h minus the function of x over h, and that would be equal to n a x to the n minus one. Now notice that in our original function, we had n, so that this is one less. And notice that we n, whatever the exponent was of the original function, is now multiplied times a. So it's n a x to the one less than the exponent that we originally had. In example one, we want to find f prime of x if f of x is equal to 7x to the negative fourth. So that would give us f prime of x is equal to, we're going to take the negative 4 and multiply it times 7, which will give us negative 28x to the negative third. Now we have taken the derivative, but just for format's sake, I'm going to uh, x to the negative third, the negative exponent simply means it needs to be dropped to the bottom, so that would be negative 28 over x to the third, and we are finished. In example two, we're going to find the derivative of y in terms of x, given that f of x is equal to the fifth root of x squared, so this is the same as x to the two fifths. So notice that we're just rewriting these so that we can use our power rule. And that would give us f prime of x, or dy dx, is equal to, and we're going to multiply two fifths times the understood one that's out front, x to the two fifths minus one, which is five fifths. So that would give us two fifths x to the negative three fifths, and then to take care of the negative by dropping it to the bottom would be 2 over 5x to the 3 fifths. And we have found the derivative for example 2. Example 3, we want to find d sub x if f of x is equal to 4 over x to the third. Once again, I'm going to get this into the form so that I can use my power rule. So d of x will be equal to negative 12 x and subtract 1 from the 3 that would be negative 4 and then fix my negative exponent negative 12 over x to the 4th and we have the derivative of that one. In example 4 here we're going to multiply to get rid of this we're going to multiply this into both of these so that's going to give us ax to the 4th minus 10x to the third. Now what we're going to learn here is when I'm taking the derivative of a polynomial, I can take the derivative of each one separately. So that'll give us 32x to the third. So notice how I just did the first one. And then 3 times negative 10 will be negative 30x. And subtract 1 from the top power would be 2. And I now have the derivative and everything is simplified. In example 5, we have dy dx, the derivative of y in terms of x. All right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one. Now, we know the square root is the same as x to the 1 half. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to x to the 1 half, and I'm going to move it up to the top. So that's going to give me x to the negative 1.2 minus 4 x to the negative 1 half. So 1 half covers the square root and the negative covers the fact that it was on the bottom. All right, and now that I can do that, I can take the derivative in terms of x. 
So that would be x to the negative 1.2 minus 1 plus, and that negative 1 half times negative 4 will give me a positive, and 1 half times 4 is 2x to the negative 1 half minus 1, which is 2 over 2, and that will give us x to the negative 2.2 plus 2x to the negative three halves and that will be equal to one over x to the 2.2 plus two over x to the three halves and we're done and in the last one we're going to find dx and what I'm going to do is kind of like I did in example four where I multiplied it out but here I'm going to divide so it's almost separated. So f of x is actually equal to 3x to the fifth over 7x minus x to the fourth over 7x, which will be equal to 3 sevenths x to the fourth minus 1 seventh x to the third. So we did a little simplifying there. And then now I can take the derivative. So 4 times that would be 12 over 7x, and we'll subtract 1, which will give us 3. And that will give us minus 3 7x to the second. And we are done. Now in objective 2, we're going to use the power rule and our understanding of derivatives to solve real-world problems. So in the first example, we are given f of x is equal to this polynomial. Find the following. So A, we're going to find the slope of the tangent line everywhere on the function. And we know that the slope of the tangent line is the derivative of that function. So part A, we're going to use the power rule and get 6x squared minus 5. And notice that this would be x to the 0 power up here. And 0 times 6 would give you 0, so it's gone. So any constant, anytime you get a constant, it's going to, when you and take the derivative of it, it's going to go. So second, let's find the slope of the tangent line at x equal 2. So all we have to do in this case is find f prime of 2, which is 6 times 2 quantity squared minus 5, which is 24 minus 5, which is 19. So the slope at x equal 2 of that tangent line is 19. And C, we're going to find the equation of the tangent line on the function at x equal 2. Okay, well we know that tangent lines, line being the key word there, all have to be y equal mx plus b. This is the slope intercept form. And we know that our slope of the tangent line is already 19, so we go y is equal to 19x plus b. Now it would be nice for us to find b. So I need an x and a y. Well, let's see. x is 2, and this was the function. So if, if x is equal to 2, and we plug it in f of x, we can find the y value. So let's find f of 2 is equal to 2 times 2 cubed minus 5 times 2 plus 6, which is 16 minus 10 plus 6, which is 6 plus 6, which is 12. Very good. An x, which is 2, and a y, which is 12. So that'd be 12 is equal to 19 times 2 plus b. So that would be 12 is equal to 38 plus b. Subtract 38 from both sides. So b is equal to negative 26. So our equation will be y equals the slope, which is 19x minus my b, which is minus 26. That'll be the equation of the tangent line at x equal 2. Example 2. 
If Mary Jane's lemonade business sales is modeled by the function of time and days, t represented by s of t is equal to 100 minus 50t to the negative. Find the rate of change after seven days. Well, the rate of change is going to be s prime of t, or the derivative of s of t. And that's going to be equal to, notice that the 100 will go away, and then we'll be left with 50 t and subtract 1 from negative 1 would be negative 2. Okay? All right, and to find her sales, remember this is the same as 50 over t squared. So if we're going to find her sales after 7 days, we're going to find s prime of 7. So we're going to do 50 over 7 quantity squared, which is 50 over 49. And so that would be the rate of change of her sales after seven days. In example three, we're given the cost function is c of x is equal to 22 plus 3x, and the revenue function is 25x. Let's find the following information. First, the profit function. Now, profit is always going to be the same as revenue minus the cost will give us a profit function. So in example three, we were given that C of X was equal to 22 plus 3X. We were given that uh, R of X was equal to 25X. And they asked us first to find P of X. Well, P of X is equal to the revenue minus the cost. Right? So that would be equal to 25x minus 22 plus 3x. That would be equal to 25x minus 22 minus 3x. So put the 3 and the 25 together, that would be 22x minus 22. So this is our profit function. Part B asked for us to find C of 15. And they asked us to find R of 15. And they asked us to find P of 15. That's easy enough. All we've got to do is plug 15 into the C function. So that would be 22 plus 3 times 15. Would be 22 plus 45. Which would be 67. So that's C of 15. R of 15 would be plugging 15 into 25 times 15, which would be 375. And the last one is we're going to plug 15 in for P. So our P function was 22 times 15 minus 22, which would be 330 minus 22, which would be 308. And so that's giving us this answer. Okay, so part C. Ask for us to find C prime of X. Ask us to find R prime of X. And ask us to find P prime of X. Okay, so we're finding the derivatives of these three functions. Well, all three of them are fairly simple. C prime of X would be equal to 3. R prime of X would be equal to 25. And P prime of X using the power rule would be equal to 22. All right. And then D is going to ask us to find C prime of 15, which is easy enough because there's no X involved in the formula, so it's just going to be 3. And R prime of 15, well, so that's once again, there's no X, so that's going to be 25. And P prime of 15, and ditto for the last one. 